The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Thursday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern Time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and you have markets in negative territory to kick things off right now. S&Ps just under 4,300. We're negative by 14 points, trading at 4,283 right now. You're off by about a third of percent. NASDAQ 100, you're off by three-tenths percent. Quite a charge higher in the markets yesterday. NASDAQ 100, you're talking about 350 points from the low pre-market to where we ended the session. We're just off those levels, off 41 points, about a quarter percent in the NASDAQ 100 on the red. The Dow, off an even 100 points. That's about three-tenths percent in the negative at 33,226. And the Russell, off by seven this morning. Crude, talk about a pullback, man, from $95 to $82 in the span of less than a week. Basically one week on the dot. 95 to 82, we're just above that level, we're still off $1.21 in crude right now. Gold contract con continuing to decline as well as gold, off about $6 this morning. We jumped to notes and bonds, a little bit of a reversal of the trend yesterday. We're holding on to those levels right now. You got the 10 year up two ticks right now. You're talking about a 10 year yield, 4.74%. 4.74. We were above 4.8, what were we at, 4.84, 4.83, something like that yesterday on the 10-year. Right now, 4.74, basically flat on the 10-year right now. We jump over to the dollar index. Dollar index pulls back as we get a little bit of a slight reprieve in yields. Dollar index just below 107, 106.71 right now in that dollar index. We jump around to some of the other currencies as well. Dollar yen, right, quite the pullback on Tuesday, chopping around right near that 149 area. And boy, that has been quite a trend. The pullback from about a year ago, 152, we almost make it to that price level. We trade all the way back down to below 130. And just like that, we're testing those highs yet again. Maybe that's the rollover, though, this week with potentially a little bit of central bank action over in Japan. We're above 150. And just like that, we're below 149. But that playing into the dollar index as well. We jump over to the euro. And the euro sitting at about 105.20. All right, we jump to... The appetizer of economic news ahead of tomorrow's non-farm payroll number. Jobless claims this morning, nowhere near as important as the non-farm payroll numbers that come tomorrow at 8.30. But nonetheless, 207,000 was the unemployment for, uh, excuse me, applications for unemployment. U.S. initial jobless claims, 207,000 last week. The market was looking for 210. So pretty much in line. A slight uptick from where we were the prior week. You take a look at this chart. Initial jobless claims. What were we at? Maybe 200, 201, 202, something like that. We're at 207. I mean, you're talking about marginal, marginal differences. Continuing claims basically sitting where they were last week at almost 1.7 million for continuing claims on the jobless front. That number out this morning, but guess what? The market's going to be waiting. It's going to be waiting for non-farm payrolls. And we caught quite a little bid yesterday on a weaker ADP number than the market was looking for. We'll see if that carries through today, to say the least. All right, what do we got pulled up uh, here? We got a couple ones. How about this Ozempic, though? A couple articles out here I found interesting, right? You got uh, this one out yesterday, the, and I was reading it this morning because it was almost at the close yesterday. Two writers, I've actually met Shelly Banjo. She was friends with one of my friends in college uh, afterwards in New York, worked for Bloomberg in New York. I think she runs their, maybe their New York bureau at this point. She was overseas at one point. Nonetheless, didn't even see she wrote it until this moment. Ozempec, one of the writers with Brendan Case, making people buy less at Walmart. So look how data is so important, number one, right? Walmart saying it's already seeing an impact on shopping demand from people taking the diabetes drug, Wegovi, and other appetite suppressing medications. They're studying the changes in sales patterns using anonymous data on shopper populations. It's going to look at purchasing changes among people taking the drug and can also compare those habits to similar people who aren't taking the shots. You talk about data. I mean, I, I, 
people might not, I mean, they make it a point to say it's anonymous, right? But you're reading that and being like, man, so they're going to be studying the medication I'm taking and my buyer tendencies. Think about that. That's actually what this article is saying. They're going to be tying together the Walmart pharmacy. They know what drugs you're on. And they're looking at your buying patterns. Maybe you maybe you go on a steroid pack and you're going to be a little extra hungry and they put a sale in front of you for something, right? Think about that. That's where it is, man. Um, so, yeah, they're seeing a pullback in terms of less units, slightly less categories, and a slight pullback in the overall basket. It's interesting nonetheless. Uh so that story out there yesterday, okay, Walmart's been on a tear recently. And then you jump to a story basically last night from the journal, right? They, this thing is everywhere. America's food giants confront the Ozempic era. Nearly 7% of the population is projected to be on weight loss drugs in the next 12 years. Well, who knows where we're going to be in 12 years? Um, I hope not. But, you know, where we are, not too surprising. People want the ability to take a drug to solve everything, and I don't know if that's going to be the case in this one, man. We will find out, and, and hopefully, because when you reach a level, you need some assistance, all right, you need some help, but the bottom line is I, 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 it's very tough to imagine a drug that somehow solves the problem that makes you eat less or, or burn more calories and somehow is not interfering in some way. Because really, there's nothing. Anyway, we'll go from there. Uh, but execs at food manufacturers, Campbell's to Conagra, said they're fielding questions from investors about the potential impact as internal teams start to assess consumer behavior and brainstorm ways to ex uh, to respond. Pretty interesting. You got two articles out here from Bloomberg and from the Wall Street Journal talking about user, user tendencies on weight loss drugs and how it's going to impact some of the biggest retailers out there. Walmart, Campbell's. Conagra. Those people could cut their daily calorie consumption by as much as 30%. That's 300 patient, patients. For a person on a 2,000 calorie diet, that could mean eliminating a one ounce bag of salted potato chips, a bottle of soda, and more each day. Now, here's what I'd say people who are probably on those drugs are probably consuming more than 2,000 calories. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But that's probably a number that you are above. So if you're above 200, uh, 2,000, let's say you're actually 2,500, which for a man many times is actually just enough calories to maintain a, a reasonable weight. So if you're on weight loss drugs and you're a man and you're at 2,500 calories, depending your size, you're probably going to be losing weight in most situations. So you're probably even above that. Let's say you're 2,500. That's 750 calories that you'd be dropping. 750 calories on a daily basis. That's a lot of food from these companies, man. Uh, you got one person in here, a woman, said she's eating significantly less since she started taking Eli Lilly's Manjaro. I can't keep track with how many of these drugs are on the market right now. Uh, family orders from restaurants less often, and their grocery bills have dropped by as much as 20%. Yeah, so you can go down the line, Hershey's, Mondelez, Hostess. Uh, nonetheless, pretty interesting. It, it uh, is hitting a inflection point. As articles popping up everywhere, Walmart's talking about it, retailers are talking about it, so pay attention to that. Uh, but, you know, to be on my soapbox, my soapbox, and I could eat a little better and definitely get a little bit better exercise and eat a little bit healthier and snack less, I don't think there's a holy grail pill to solve eating healthy stuff and getting movement. So keep that in mind as well. Go take a walk, uh, and, and we'll be back in three minutes, folks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures negative by 12 points right now, trading at 42.85 to talk about some of the market action. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks, from the program The Fast Market, right here at 12 noon Eastern time every day from the Schwab Network. Kevin, let's jump right into it, man. We got jobless claims this morning, the ADP number yesterday, non-farm payrolls tomorrow. What do you think about this market action? Good morning, Tom. Yeah, going through... On the market, two or three have been pretty. Smart. I've got. Hello. 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 I think I lost him there. Medium companies are hiring still, and then job claims today two hundred and seven thousand. That's a historically strong labor market. Now three weeks in a row, Tommy, hovering around a hundred thousand jobs. All this is the setup for tomorrow's big number, Tommy. And, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what happens. I, I thought really was interesting this morning was the dramatic move in the dollar and in yields when that jobless claims data came out. Now, they're e inching back here. You've got yields actually back higher on the day. Or, yeah, the yields almost on the day. You've got the dollar back down on the day. But, man dramatic move and then of course there's the crude oil discussion that's been in pretty incredible the last couple of days you beat me to the question man on on crude you talk about i i just pull it up yeah. uh i had a 10 minute chart going back 10 days but basically it's five days ago man last uh wednesday night thursday morning we had 95 dollars on crude we're at 83 bucks on crude what do you think about that should people wait to fill up the tank right now kevin what do you think about that pullback in crude to 83 bucks from 95 well, there, there's clearly been sentiment change in crude oil, Tommy. And if you think about it, it was interesting. Yesterday's largest sell-off of the year came from news in the morning that OPEC Plus was holding uh, their pr production levels as is. That seems pretty bullish. Then you got a 
2.2 decrease in crude oil inventories. That seems pretty bullish. So what what's going on here in crude oil? Well, you got to dig a little deeper. There was a 6.5 million barrel increase in gasoline inventories and the demand levels. There's a report that demand for crude oil is collapsing, and that's what fueled this sell-off in crude oil. They're worried about the demand side of the ledger in crude, and that's how you get dramatic sell-offs. You know, supply has been pretty consistent, right? U.S. is upping theirs, but overall, OPEC Plus is going to remain around 9 million barrels a day. U.S. is almost 13 million barrels a day, Tommy. So that's a pretty significant change there. But it's the demand side that, that's affecting crude prices right now. And crude down another one one and a quarter percent today. Yeah, that is quite a pullback, man. I appreciate the take. Uh, and those are some interesting numbers as you put in that context. Gas, of course. Um, I'm looking at that chart myself. I'm saying, all right, I, got, I have enough gas to go a couple of days. I'm going to let those gas pumps catch up with this price of crude, quite the pullback. Uh, with that in mind, Kevin, we go forward to tomorrow. We had the ADP number yesterday, some weak numbers there. We know they can be wildly different sometimes. Are you looking for action either way in terms of a big number or a soft number tomorrow? Are you just going to look for the data? Do you have any feelings on that one? Yeah, sure. Some of the expectations are from between 160, 168 jobs. Some of the whisper numbers are closer to 180. So watch for a stronger number there. But unemployment expected to come from 3.8 to 3. .8. But the real interesting part of this time is going to be wages. Wages that were 0.2 a month ago expected to tick up to 0.3 on a month-over-month -month basis and hold flat at 0.3% year-over-year. And of the labor markets, right? every union in the country is be renegotiating. Every time one of those gets done, it's higher wages and it's thick year inflation, Tommy. Yeah, those wages, man, for sure. ADP had the wage numbers out there. Still pretty lofty numbers in terms of staying in the same job, um, changing jobs. I think it was at 9%. You changed your job. Still pretty big numbers, well off the highs we had. But uh, on an overall basis, some big numbers on a yearly basis. Wages going up on ADP. We get the numbers tomorrow. With that in mind, Kevin, do you guys have any equities you're talking about on Fast Market coming up at 12 today? Yeah, today we're going to have some fun as we get ready for Ernie and Tommy, and we're going to look at all airlines. Life Folio is going to do a presentation on airlines. We're going to trade United Airlines. We're going to trade Delta Airlines, and we're going to trade American Airlines. So we're going to preview the earnings that are coming out in about two weeks on some of the airlines and Delta next week. So, yeah, kind of a, kind of a pre-earning show on airlines. I like it, man. I'm going to check it out. 12 o'clock today, and, and that's one sector of this economy that's that's been on fire. Uh, I, of course, was just traveling overseas. I might be trying to make a trip up to Boston in the coming months to bring Tommy up there as well, and I know I'm not the only one traveling out there. So we look forward to the program, Kevin. I appreciate the time. As always, we don't talk to you tomorrow. We get some big numbers, man. I look forward to talking to you next week, seeing where this market is. Have a great one, Kevin. We'll be watching at 12 today, man. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day and a great weekend. You too, Kevin. Folks, check it out. The airlines, right? And yeah, they're coming up. They're early in the earnings season as we kick things off in a week or two. Kevin mentioned Delta there next week. Then we get the other airlines in the following weeks. We get banks in the beginning of earnings as well. And it is. That is the sector that's been on fire, man. I mean, I just had a trip over to Europe. Now, that's for a wedding. One of my best friends out there. Um, but everyone's been traveling and the airlines have been facing some lofty prices in crude. When you look at that, but that may be abating a bit as well. All right, we got a call. We got our man, Charlie from Framingham. Charlie, good morning. Good morning. Yes, hello. We got you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. I'd like to know where the bottom of this is. Well, isn't that the question, man? It's a great call uh, and question, Charlie, because boy, this thing, you talk about a pullback, right? We're trading at $79 right now. Put this thing on a five-year weekly, you pull it back to the COVID lows. On my chart, COVID low is $79.07 going into 2020. We're 30 pennies away from that, and you actually got a, under that level yesterday. So, Charlie, are you looking to trade this? Are you looking to invest it on a longer-term basis? What are you looking to do with it? I'm looking to buy it for a long-term investment. You know, um, on a longer-term 
investment, right? What I would do it is I would scale into this equity, and by that I mean, you know, let's say you have five thousand dollars you want to put into Disney. Okay, you can yeah. take you could take you know fifteen hundred of it, put it in now. Fifteen hundred, put it in in a few months. Fifteen hundred, put it in six months after that if you'd like, and over the next year, put that money into this because you know you're back to prices in Disney that you were trading at in. 10 years ago almost, in 2014. So the market's sitting at 4,300 right now, Charlie, You know, and I, I think you might get some negative action and face some headwinds, and if that happens, Disney's gonna trade lower with the market. But over you know, a period of years, yeah, I think $80 right now starting a position, just risk-reward-wise on a longer-term basis is not a bad deal, man. Okay, thank you. Okay, I appreciate the call, man. Hope everything's going well in Framingham. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I mean, we were in this thing in the newsletter, made a bunch, lost a bunch before we got out. Um, didn't make as much as we could have because, man, that was a violent pullback from 203. We're trading at $79, but you are back to prices that you were trading at almost 10 years ago in Disney. And some of the lineup that they have in terms of big movies coming out, they got a couple Star Wars movies coming out, maybe 2026. If you go a year, a couple years out on Disney, man, um, they're going to get some revenue back up. Be back for the open, folks. Stay tuned. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&P negative by about six points right now. That's just more than one tenth percent. The red Nasdaq 100. You're off by ten points. Let's jump around to see how some of those magnificent, magnificent seven are trading. Apple catches a little bit of a lift into positive territory on a negative market day. Apple up uh, 27 pennies, or almost two tenths percent, to 173.91. We jump over to Microsoft shares. Microsoft flat right now. You jump over to Amazon. Amazon down about four tenths percent right now. Nvidia, we check in on up about two tenths percent. Tesla shares down about six tenths percent. Let's see how some of the car companies are trading. Ford, let's look at this a little longer term. Yeah, coming back to test those lows, right? 1172, 1158 is the low. We're at 1198. You got all the way up to a high of 1291 on Ford. We jump over to GM, Whew, 31. We were just at 34. Look at that. It's like a 10% hit from where we were September 15th, let alone the high we had back on $41 July 12th, as that one is persisting. Markets clawing back some of those losses a bit. Jumping back to Disney, if Charlie's still listening, hopefully he is. Uh, getting a little bit of, because if you're thinking big picture, right, then, then I like to tie in fundamentals as well, okay? Especially big picture. Because, you know, if you're trading over a three-hour period, the fundamentals of a company probably don't matter. You're trading longer term, they, they probably matter. The technical indicators may help you trading a fundamental company, okay? They may help you pinpoint areas of undersold or overbought for that equity indicative of the underlying fundamentals that are driving the oversold or overbought price levels. But they don't matter on a three-hour basis, right? They matter on a long-term basis. So fundamentally, okay, one of the things going on, you look to the movie slate they have, okay? Boy, in 2019, when this thing was on fire, I think they had something like, zooming in. Yeah, this run up here, okay? We're zooming in. Here's 2019. Now, they had a perfect world going on in terms of they – had movies that were crushing it, and they had Disney Plus that was crushing it as well. They came out with the idea of Disney Plus in April with details, actually talking about the fact that they were going to undercut Netflix pricing. That's the first acceleration. The market says, you know, oh my goodness, man, that's your business plan. You're not going to go HBO Max where you're going to go $20 a month. You're going to go like $4 a month and just try and get everybody. You go up, you launch Disney Plus in November, talk about timing being everything. They literally launched their streaming service two to three months before a global pandemic shut down everything, okay? You trade lower with the COVID lows, you accelerate higher as Disney's Plus takes off, the whole market takes off. You peak well before the market though, okay, at 203. But this year, part of what happened there is that you had some amazing movie theater runs. I think there were eight or nine different movies that grossed a billion dollars that they put out. So you look at some of the movies they have, if you're thinking longer term, okay? Here's where things get exciting. Now, these are always subject to change, like anything, okay? But uh, that's not the one I wanted. Excuse me. One second. Where did I just go? Yes, this is the one I wanted. So this is a story from Insider talking about uh, they got, you know, 50 movies or something. They go through every movie that they have. But here's where I'm going to zoom in on where things start to get interesting, Okay. is actually at the end of 2025, two years out. You have a Fantastic Four film, which is gonna be in the middle of 2025. That could be a big one. You got Moana, we just watched Moana again. Outstanding movie. If you got kids in the household, folks, you haven't checked out Moana, check out Moana on Disney Plus. There's the ad. Uh, so they got a remake of Moana coming out middle of 2025, but here's where it really gets interesting. You got Avatar 3, that should be a big movie. That's the end of 2025. This one was already made. It was simultane simultaneously shot with Avatar 2. Avatar 2. So it's sitting in the bank. They were going to push it out in 2024, but things have all been pushed back. That's coming out now 2025. Okay. Then where do you go? They got a bunch of other films they talk about, but you have an Avengers movie in the middle of 2026, and here's the main event. The first Star Wars movie since, I think, 2019. Okay, that big year, 2019, it included at least one Star Wars movie. It might have even been two. So you're going to have a seven-year low. You're going to get a Star Wars movie, okay? They announced a new trilogy. That's the deal. You got three of them coming down the line, the Star Wars films. May 2026, they kick it off. Boom, December, they hit you with the second Star Wars film in 2026, okay? 
And then they got a bunch of other pitch films in here that they haven't quite pegged yet. They have an Avengers movie, 2027. And what do they got? Boom. Another Star Wars movie, the end of 2027. So you're going to get three Star Wars movies over the period of about 18 months scheduled right now, the middle of, what did I say, 2026, right? Yeah, the middle of 2026, May 2026. So you're talking about two and a half years from right now. That's the first time. But guess what? You wait two and a half years. And in a couple of years, their movie slate's going to be rocking, I think. And that's what it's going to take to put up some multi-billion dollar movies. They got plenty that are coming down the line before then. You know, this this talks about many of them in here. Um, this goes through everyone. OK, you got a Marvel's movie coming out in November. You got a movie Wish, The Bike Rider is not familiar with many of these things, right? These aren't going to be the ones that crush it. They might be great movies, but they are going to be the ones that are Star Wars movies, okay? And you got to go, look at we're already into next March. Elio, that might be a big one. Snow White's out there in March of 2024. There's one that may actually hit, Deadpool. What's that in? Seven, eight months from right now? Talking about a big Deadpool? I like that. Ryan Reynolds, man, that's a good film. Film. You haven't seen those. You got a Planet of the Apes coming down the line, Okay. You have uh, Inside Out, an animated movie. Mufasa, The Lion King. Maybe that will get some action. None of them are going to do what three Star Wars movies in 18 months are going to do for those. So keep those on your radar at least. Time goes quickly. Uh, you may find yourself, if you're not in there yet, maybe in a couple years, looking at that slate. And, uh, yeah, there's only one Disney, folks. They'll be okay. They will. Uh, we haven't made it to Disney yet. we got to make it to Disney. Got to get ready to get that pocketbook out. All right, S and P's right now negative by three points. Market claws back some of those losses. Let's check in on Bitcoin because we're going to talk a little bit of uh, Alameda research. Bitcoin up five hundred and fifteen dollars. And how about this headline, man? FTX employees found Alameda's secret backdoor months before the collapse. The crypto exchange allowed Alameda Alameda to have a negative balance of up to sixty five billion dollars. Right? Amazing. Um, prosecutors say he stole funds from FTX customers in part by secretly ordering the programming of special features that gave Alameda, his crypto trading firm, the ability to treat FTX as a giant slush fund. He's going to claim that he was just a bad businessman. And it seems like it's pretty reasonable assumption to understand that when you take all the customer funds and put them into your trading firm and your trading firm has a negative balance of up to $65 billion that you might be um, pushing the limits of reasonable business decisions. We're going to get to see that play out. $65 billion. How about that one, man? Bitcoin, 28250 This thing has been on quite a tear to start off the year. Uh, start off the year. All year. We're almost coming to the end of the year. Kicked off the year at 16300 We're trading at 28000 We got highs out there of 32165 Market's barely in the red. We check in on notes and bonds. Highs for the session. Pushing 107.10 right now. We get the 10-year yield, 4.71%. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. 
Direction Leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps off by 13 right now. We trade lower after almost touching 4,300 right there on the open. Right after the open, 435, we're up there. We're trading lower right now with markets in the red. We jump over to crude. Down about a buck 04, buck 02 right now at 83.20. The gold contract catches a little bit of a bid after being down to 18.26. You're at 18.34. We jump over to the dollar index right now, DXY. Yeah, a little bit of a reversal as well. We're at 106.85. We're at 106.64 right now. We check back in on yields before we jump around a bit. And sitting at about 107.10 right now. So back to FTX for a second, right? It was interesting. Um, some of the other points in here, just talking about how it happened. Basically, normal users could not go negative on FTX, okay? They were subject to an automatic liquidation process. If you had an account on FTX, you go negative, what do they do? They sold off their assets if the balances fell below zero, but that did not apply to Alameda, their trading entity, okay? So in the spring of 2022, a small group of employees were going through the computer code and found some of those special features. They were working for Ledger X. That was a small crypto derivatives exchange that FTX had acquired the previous year. They were looking at whether the code for FTX's main international exchange based in the Bahamas could be used in the US where regulations were tighter. And here's the quote, just wanted to point out that there are currently a few places in the dot, dot, dot code base where Alameda gets special treatment in one way or another. May 5th, 2022, right? Think about these in terms of the information that was out there. That's it, man. They know it right there. That person probably knows it, okay? His boss, Ledger X Chief Risk Officer, Julie Schoening, replied that there are less rigid rules on the offshore exchange adding, but yeah, we should clean up this sort of stuff, right? They know right there, okay? They unearthed several problematic practices without FTX managed risk and handled liquidations, including their ability to go negative and its exemption from normal auto liquidation procedures. The team was led by this woman, Julie Schoening, Schoening a PhD in physics who had previously worked uh, at the CFTC, where she analyzed high frequency trading. At the time, the significance of the discovery wasn't fully clear to the employees. I would say it's to, if you put two and two together, some of them probably figured it out. FTX was still a respected crypto exchange and it would still be a half a year. But you have to know the setup is, is right for what they're doing, right? But still their team's leader was sufficiently worried about Alameda's treatment that she reported up the chain 
She raised concerns about her team's discovery with her boss. Okay. They said it was fixed. In early August, she was fired. That's the part I was waiting to get to, right? The termination came after some FTX exec circulated a document containing what were reported purported to be screenshots of inappropriate messages she had sent to other employees. Some of the people said the messages were doctored or taken out of context, so they fired her, okay? FTX sometimes paid off whistleblowers, okay? Shoning hired lawyer uh, the, the lawyer banks who threatened to sue over the termination. This is like the, the, the last part of this. The two sides hashed out a $5 million settlement, but she didn't get it done before they went BK. Maybe that gets clawed back, too. Um, I don't know, but probably wishes she got that done. Right? Probably wishes she got that done, man. Yeah, it's 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 a sad deal, you know? And you got to make sure you know who you're trusting with. You know, John, I feel for you. Somebody had, I'm sure that you could have a lot of money in there. It's a, it's a reasonable mistake to make. I'm fortunate coming from the online poker background, dealing with unregulated exchanges. That's what those online poker sites were, unregulated exchanges. I knew that any dollar I had in there was basically just trusted to some dude running a business in the Bahamas that if tomorrow he decided to close up shop, there was very little chance that I was going to get my money back. That's what this was, okay? This was not Fidelity. It was not Schwab, okay? It was FTX, some random Bahamas dude who was running a shop over there, and a lot of people got tricked into thinking it was anything other than that. And that's where, you know, um, hopefully they claw back some of that money, but a lot of it's gone, man, because it was just mismanaged to an ultra degree. Yeah. I mean, $65 billion negative positions, right? You're telling me they find code that allows Alameda to go negative, and they're the ones inspecting code, and she worked at the CFTC. Seems like you might be able to immediately understand that, wait a second, uh, this is not probably being run the way it needs to be. All right, what else do we got going on here? We got mortgages. Let's see, I got a few articles from mortgages. No, that one, we're going to talk about this one. Yeah, this is the one I want to talk about first, okay? The bond sell-off might force the Fed to rethink shedding assets. This one out right when the program basically started, this morning in the journal, okay? Uh, I read it right as I was kicking off the program and, and in one of the breaks, but check out what this talks about. And it's talking about how long they can do quantitative tightening, okay? And what they talk about in here is that not only are they pushing that debt off the books, but at the same time, the banks are not buying it as well because they need to shore up their balance sheets in the same way. And that's creating an even bigger problem for mortgages, okay? And I'm jumping around, but I'll jump to the end of this here. The Fed, however, could be underestimating what its commitment to quantitative tightening is doing to the market psychology, okay? This is particularly the case with mortgages. That's why we all care about mortgages, right? Not only is the Fed reducing its holdings, quantitative tightening, letting them roll off the balance sheet. We're going to go over the big number. I think it's $7 trillion they're at right now. Not only is the Fed reducing its holdings, but big banks focused on overcoming the effects of rising interest rates have been less eager to buy. Okay, so you have them unloading all of these securities at the same time that the banks don't want to buy into the securities. As a result, mortgage rates are much higher relative to treasury yields than has historically been the case. So even though we have high treasury yields, mortgage rates are historically above those rates because of what's happening on the stresses on the housing market. The Fed might be might like investors to view quantitative tightening as something that is most likely happening in the background, but investors might not be inclined to agree. Um, so they say something similar happened in before in 2013. The Fed was prepared to taper the pace at which was uh, accumulating assets. Um, yeah, that was the taper tantrum, right? The Fed went back on its plan the time that they did that. So it is interesting that you're not hearing a, that conversation a lot. The historical difference between where the mortgage rates are. Now, here's where you go to the next one. All right. Everything's related right now. There are a lot of conversations about yields. 
and uh, weight loss drugs, right? No, uh, there were though. Is your next mortgage seven or eight percent? Shop it around, okay? We won't spend an eternity on this article, but with rates at the highest in more than two decades, home buyers are looking for any way to lower their monthly payment. And yeah, shop it around, okay? Because it is a competitive environment, rates are high. The amount by which typical mortgage rates range above or below the average, look how much disparity you have, okay? The typical mortgage rate ranges almost half a percent above or below the average right now, depending on where you go. Stay tuned, folks. One more segment. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have markets basically back to pre-market session lows. We just hit 42.80 right now. We're negative by about 15 points on the S&P. That's a third of percent. We get the NASDAQ 100 off by 100 points right now. That's about 7 tenths percent. Dow off by 60. Russell off by 2. We check in on crude. Sitting down a dollar right now. Gold contract down about a buck 70. We check back in on gold as we wrap up the hour. Gold, uh, excuse me, dollar, 106.58 right now. And we were talking about interest rates on your mortgage, Okay. Make sure you shop around because you didn't have this type of disparity when you had rates at such low levels. But we just read, right, what's going on right now? The gap between the 10-year treasury and the mortgage rate is historically high. So there is a, a gap there, which is probably the reason why you have 
so much volatility in the amount that people are paying on their mortgages. Okay, some lenders are currently offering rates closer to seven, and others are offering well over eight, depending on where you are on the credit spectrum, credit rating spectrum. I'm sure that matters. All that matters. Okay, but shop around for your mortgage because we have his in a historically high gap between the treasuries and where mortgages are, it's usually what, 2%, you're at almost 3% right now, right? And some occasions where the 10 year was versus where a mortgage would be, sometimes your 30 year mortgage was about two, maybe two and a half percent above where the 10 year's at. Well, the 10 year's at 4.7 right now. Okay, so 2% is 6.7 above there. 2.5 is 7.2 right now. Some people are paying eight. That's three and a quarter percent above where the 10 year is trading at. Yeah, so there's some room there. Make sure you shop around. Uh, yeah, they talk about one gentleman in here. 7.25%. They shopped around. They got 6.62. Big numbers, man. All right. Appreciate you tuning in, folks. Kicking things off. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. And as we finish up the program, we're going to check in on Constellation Brands. They are selling a lot of beer. They're selling a lot of uh, liquor, tequila in particular. But they're not selling as much wine and maybe spirits overall. Nonetheless, some decent numbers. They're selling a lot of Modelo beer. And Corona Brands, double digit sales growth over there. And we take a look longer term, things are on a tear. Just chopping around from where it was basically in 2021, but this year up to 273. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for Basil coming up next. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Have a great Thursday, everybody.